You know who it is. I'm joined by Julian. How are you doing, Julian? I'd like to say I'm all good, Russell, but uh, <laughs> after the WBC's, I know we'll talk about that later, after the WBC's statement, you, you got to question your own sanity, mate, so maybe I need to be in a padded cell somewhere, but other than that, life's good, mate. I'm all right. Where, where does this leave boxing now? Because does this mean that you can take the same drugs as Conor Ben were taking and say, well, I've been eating all these eggs? Has it opened a can of worms? What it means is anybody who's accused of anything, you can just give any old excuse. And as long as that's a reasonable excuse, I think the WBC used the words reasonable, they'll say, all right, yeah, that, that's fair enough. Um, you just give a reasonable excuse. You just do a quick Google, what else is uh, clomiphene in? And then you look at about the 20th, 28th thing down on Google and it'll say it can be found in eggs for fertility treatment. You say, that'll do. And that's, there's your excuse. So what's the point in having this Olympic-style testing? You know, like the stuff that caught Ben Johnson, if we're not going to punish people. Well, thing is with this one, so... You, you know, I go on my little rambles, but what is is this? I very rarely go on social media, but I've I've been made aware by a few people about Conor Ben giving it the finger on um, Instagram and uh, Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So I have a I have an Instagram account that I don't activate. Good God! Uh, like it. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, I put a note. I put a note on Conor Ben's Instagram. It wasn't offensive. It wasn't rude. And I'm basically saying, listen, okay, when you when eggs are imported into the UK, like any food whatsoever, or any any goods, raw goods, materials, whatever, you have what's called, and I'm not being patronising to anyone, you have what's called a chain of custody, which is effectively a, an audit or a paper trail. So if you buy some eggs at the local supermarket or the corner shop, those eggs will have a serial number on them, an item number. You have a receipt to prove you bought the eggs. That item number, serial number, wherever it's made, made, it'll have what's called a vendor code. So that vendor code will be on that packaging. And what it means is we can trace it right back to where it was dis distribu di distributed, to where it was farmed, to how they treat that farm. So you can trace it right back. So if Connor Ben is innocent, what he should have done, he's got his receipts out. His solicitors, who were the, his lawyers, who were the greatest lawyers in the world, would have looked at the audit trail and they actually would have, beyond any doubt, been able to trace it right back to the farm where those eggs were produced. And what we could have clearly done is said, these eggs were produced on this farm. Here's the paper trail, here's the audit trail. And this proves that this farm, because it's not in the UK, so it's not banned, it's only banned outside of the UK, they use the fertility treatment, the fertility drug, clomiphene, for their hens, for their chickens. Corner Ben could have done that really easy, cut out the middleman. Now we know that eggs is his defence. I'm trying not to smile saying this. Oh, we still could do Russell. this, couldn't we? Easy. It's, it's not easy. It's not difficult. I, look, I work in the paper industry. Yeah. And we, our raw materials, and this is not food. Food is so strict. All our raw materials that we use to make our product as a paper trail, as an audit trail. You can't bring anything into the UK legitimate, you know, illegitimately. It has to have an audit trail in business. So if you're selling eggs as a retailer, whether you're a supermarket, a corner shop or whatever, you have to have an audit trail. You have to have, you know, whoever imports has to have an import license for food. Honestly, Russell, it's the easiest thing in the world for Connor Ben's team to go right back to the origin you could probably find out the bleeding hen that laid it, and you could say, yes, this is a farm. I'm obviously being silly there before anybody comments. This is a farm where this egg was produced. It's not difficult yet. This is where it was produced, and this farm uses clomiphene as a fertility drug. And if that was me and I was Conor Ben, that's what I would have done. And I would have shouted from the rooftops and said, look, there's the proof. Eggs bought, eggs bought either by myself my wife or my nutritionist. These are their details. This is the paper trail. This is the country where it was imported from. These are the receipts. These is everything you need to know. Here you go. Why haven't they done that? 
I don't know, mate. It's not been done, has it? It's all not been handled very good, has it? It's it's not. It wouldn't have been as expensive as what they've been doing. We 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 where I work, you find out the country of origin for everything. It's not difficult, mate. And this is what I'm. I get frustrated at is people now. Look, ninety five percent of the people don't buy this, do they? They think it's ludicrous. But the WBC, for whatever reason, whether it's a lack of true funding, research in this, the WBC have just said, well, to be honest, some eggs that are imported in the UK, some of them, they use Clomiphene as a fertility treatment. So it's possible if you had X amount of eggs that this happened. The one thing that we can't get to is how many eggs has Ben claimed to have eaten because I keep 34, seeing different... 34 a week. Well, 34 a week is very reasonable, isn't it? It's, I mean, what is it? That's it's four, not five four a eggs. day, is it? Yeah, it's not five a day. So four and a half eggs a day. That's completely reasonable for any athlete to to take because, you know, what's that? Four and a half eggs, that's about 80 grams of protein. Conor Bennett need about 172 grams of protein a day for muscle growth based on what it was, the catch weight was. So that's a perfectly reasonable amount of eggs. And all they need to do then, Russell, to shut people like me and you up, and I'm saying the same thing, I'll keep saying it, all they need to do is to say, that is where the eggs were man not manufactured, that is where the, the eggs were farmed. And that farm, because it's, you know, it's only legal in the UK, it's only not a ruling in the UK, some countries in the EU don't allow clover feed, but, but you have to just basically just say, where these eggs were farmed, they use it, it's as simple as that. And then... He has a really solid waterproof explanation. I'll apologise. I'm sure you'd apologise. And we'll all say, you proved you're innocent, Connor. You've got it wrong. But it's like anything, isn't it? Why wouldn't you just go right to, through that process as soon as possible? Yeah. He's had some... Smoke screen. Curtis Woodhouse, hasn't he, of a Curtis's comments, uh, Connor Ben? I've not seen it. I've not, I've not seen that much because... You obviously, you made me aware last night, you and a few other people, and I just thought, I'm going to avoid YouTube tonight. I'm not going to jump on. Um, every time I jump on, I keep seeing stuff about Jake Paul and Carl Crotch, and I just thought, not tonight. I'm not doing this tonight. Yeah, but apparently somebody brought Curtis up or something and said you're out of order or something. I don't know. I, don't know. I think Curtis told him to F off or something. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day... Why is... Hey, why is Curtis Woodhouse out of order? But we don't like we don't like alleged drug treat cheats in boxing, do we? Beefy Smith didn't, well, didn't mess about with his comments, did he? What did Beefy say? You're a cheating C U N T. Well, it's just. But is this what's happened though? Now, as as it changed, instead of having to prove beyond any doubt you know, that you were spiked or whatever. Because, you know, if you look at the history, right, you look at Canelo Alvarez and all those subsequent tests, but you look at Canelo Alvarez, the biggest name in sport, he did get a ban. Tyson Fury, massive name, had a, respect, had a you know, retrospective ban. Um, if you look at Kid Galahad, who you've just mentioned, he had a ban. So all these fighters had the bans, but they all had excuses. I know the WBC can only ban him from the rankings. And it's a license that Conor Ben needs, not a, not a world ranking. A world ranking's as much use as a chocolate teapot without without a license to box, but it'll get one of those easy enough. But what I'm saying is all these fighters, you know, so Kid Galahad says, my brother spiked, you know, my drinks. Yeah. Tyson Fury, what was it? Castrated wild boar, Canelo Alvarez, Mexican horse meat. They all produced various pieces of evidence, but they still served a ban. But Conor Ben now has basically just said, I've had a few eggs. And they've just said, yeah, that, that's reasonable, Conor. Here's your ranking. Now, whilst I did predict he would get a soft ban or no ban at all, I am wondering if the WBC, not WBC, if the British Boxing Board of Control will take a slightly different stance on this. Because ultimately, I think that's the road that matters, what the his own country and his own licensing, you know, country hands out. I think that's more important. I think we need to not get too upset about the WBC. It was always going to find this. They were always, it's always going to happen. We need to see what Robert Smith and his guys have got to say about this and potentially what other people have got to say about it as well. 
What did you think to Robert Smith summing up of it all? Well, Robert off. Smith was a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things. I thought it was to the point. I thought it was effectively just saying, look, forget that, the WBC. You know, we'll look at, until we look at the evidence, we won't be licensing anybody. We'll make our own decisions. And I think that's all he can say, to be fair. We give Robert Smith a lot of stick, but that that is all he can say right now because... I keep repeating the point that people are now seeing, I keep seeing things where I had a quick look at lunchtime and people are saying, I told you Connor was innocent. No one's found him innocent. What what does that even mean? He's, he's, you know, he's innocent. He hasn't proved he's innocent. He's come up with a far-fetched theory that potentially holds a little bit of water. Yes, he could have got trace amounts of plomophene, as a byproduct of ingesting eggs, that could have happened. But how come that doesn't happen to absolutely every athlete who gets tested then? He's the only one that's been done for this, isn't he? Yeah, he's the only boxer I'm aware of. And I, I think every single boxer takes eggs as part of a staple of their diet. It's a real great source of protein, minus the yolk. It's like, so why aren't all boxers testing positive for this just kind of end? Do you think, Julian, that these eggs, they're not just ordinary eggs. They're like super eggs. These eggs are amazing. They turn you from a non-puncher into a massive puncher. They give you twice the speed. They give you twice the muscle mass. They change the shape of your jaw. They thicken your pencil neck to a neck that's the same width as your jaw. They give you quads. They give you lats, pecs. These eggs are unbelievable, and I need to get some. Yeah, I need to know where these eggs are because I need. We need these eggs, don't we? Uh, if you so want some of these eggs, if you want some eggs, Russell, I suspect, uh, Doctor Sa Doctor Sajid, um, Usman, I think yeah, I think yeah, he yeah. might sell them. He's done. He's yes, done yeah, it. Nobody can find him. Where, where is? Where is the doctor? Why hasn't Robert Smith made a statement about uh, Dr. Dr. Saeed Usman? Because he was a license holder. It's a whodunit, it, Julian. It's a whodunit. They're all dirty. They're all grubby out there. They're all covering the backsides. But I, I am interested to see if there's an application by Team Ben for a British Boxing Board of Control license. But if he's on about fighting... 173 year old Manny Pacquiao. He doesn't need a board license for that, does he? No, he doesn't, does he? He doesn't need a board no. license at all for that. So there's can... no conclusive evidence found in doping. He's going to fight with WBC. He's got his ranking back. They can't fight in yeah. England. So is it Manny Pacquiao in Saudi? And will that be now? Is it, will that now be where he's based? <clears throat> Very likely, because they'll all make a hell of a lot of money from this, won't they? But do you know the one thing? What well, a friend of mine sent me a, a, an audio earlier. He was just having a chat about this. He would talk about a few things. Um, and he just said, do you know what it is with Conor Ben? And this is how I find it. And that's why I'm tr I try to be objective with Conor Ben. But the guy has no endearing qualities whatsoever. There's, oh. there's, I know that we had Gareth A. Davis and a few other people literally sucking up to him saying, you know, he's a lovely lad. He's, a, he's such a sweet boy and it's such a shame. I hope he's innocent. And I'm sorry, I'm just honest on this one. He has, Conor Ben has no endearing qualities as a, as a human about him whatsoever. He's, he's an obnoxious, arrogant, cocky, ignorant person. And I just don't have a lot of time for him. And, that, and that's probably why I feel so... There's no humility about him. There's no kind of even a remote apology. There's just, you're all haters. I'm amazing. I have an hundred grand watch, which I'm going to get in the shot while I'm obviously taking the picture on Instagram or whatever I've done it on. And I'm going to show you all that. You're down there. You're nothing. I'm loaded. You're all haters. And I'm going to prove I'm the best. And it's just that. There's, there's not one endearing quality about Conor Ben. Seriously, I just, I, I tried to warm to him uh, early days and I watched him and I did think, wow, this kid's really improving. He's, he's dedicated. You know, he didn't look that great. 
he's dedicated and good, good on him, good on him. And there was a bit of excitement when he knocked out a couple of kids. I thought he's knuckling down, he's working hard, and you know, fair, fair enough. But the more I see him and the more I saw of him, and you know, if you look at during, you know, the listen up, I, I get, I get criticized for this on your channel and it sounds like I'm virtue signaling but and just forgive me for just rambling on a little bit Russell but you know we, we've gone through some really tough times these past few years haven't we and during Covid a lot of people well we know a lot of people lost their lives but a lot of people lost the the livings and the wealth and all we saw was Connor Ben with his brand new cars showing off his wealth I mean you know, we all like nice things, but we don't feel the need to post them every two minutes and to show off constantly. And all we saw was Conor Ben showing off his wealth, his cars, and everything this, and the best for the best. And we've gone from COVID into this major kind of global recession and such tough times. I'm not saying people aren't allowed to have nice things and people aren't allowed to, you know, to do well, because we do need positive news. We need people, you know, people to be, to be happy and we need successful people. But the guy just had no class. And I just thought there was at one point he was picking up a watch, a 250 grand watch from some jewelers. And I just thought it was classless when we were going through really tough times. And I thought, given the benefit of the doubt, Jules, he's young, he's naive. And then I just thought, you know, we all saw what, we, you know, the mocking Robin Deakin, which I can't forgive mocking someone with a disability. I thought that was absolutely vile. So anybody who defends that, you're vile as well. So we saw him knocking Robin Deakin and his disability, his club foot, and laughing with his mates. And I just thought, you're so classless. And then once again, through all this, no apology, no remorse, no no even small acceptance of, of anything. No apology for all the undercard fighters, the people who booked hotels, etc. And then we saw Chris Eubank Jr. get knocked out. And then him and his dad laughing. You know, when Chris Eubank Sr. had shown such kindness towards Conor Ben and Nigel Ben about this whole scandal and just laughing at Eubank Jr. getting knocked out. And I just thought, you really are a classless individual, Conor Ben. It genuinely is a, one of the most classless people I've, I've, I've come across in boxing. Not come across face to face, but I've, you know, I've seen and there's nothing likable about this guy at all. And I don't know where the Gareth A. Davises and all these people are coming from. Maybe they just want access to what tell it as it is, but uh, there's not many people I will say, and you and Max know me well enough, there's very few people I, I will say, I just don't have time for and I can't warm to it all, but I cannot warm to Conor Ben in any way, shape or form. He just seems to rile people up, doesn't he, Conor Ben? Just a dick. He's just classless. He's just... Like, I, I could go on all day, but none of that stops being objective. And I have been completely objective. And if he can prove, produce a paper trail, a legitimate paper trail, I will 1,000% go on YouTube and say, I've got you wrong. I apologise. You you are innocent. And I'm, I apologise for anything that I've said that may you know may make me look, feel that you are guilty or you are taking performance enhancing drugs. But he's not come up with anything. The British Border Control can licence him. And he's not. He's still not come up with anything, Russell. There's too many smoking guns and there's too many clouds around this. And it's just the fact that there's no remorse whatsoever. There's no... I think it was Spencer Oliver who said, didn't he? He says, just, just cough up. Oh, no. Just own it. You know this 270-page... You Julian, you know this 270-page yeah. dossier? Right. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> If we ever got to see it, right, would you read it? Because it takes some reading, that, wouldn't it? I, I, I'd read it back to back 15 times, 100%. Would you? Yeah, I'd read it back to back 15 times. I'd make notes and I'd, um, as I've said before, I'd want, I'd want Kent, Terry, Rico, I'd want those guys to have a look at it. I'd want my daughter to have a look at it. It was like, you know, she's, she's a law graduate and I'd, I'd, I'd want to break it down because we just know it's nonsense. We know it's a lot of words about nothing. There'll be things in there where people try to give smoke screens. It's like when DNA is part of a court trial and they use DNA and these scientists get all these graphs up. It's to confuse jur juries. 
Um, and I'd, I'd want as many people as I knew who had various skills and a good intellect to read it because I just think it's rubbish. And I can tell you it's rubbish without seeing it because they could, as I've just said, there could have just been three pages that would have done the job. And that would have been documentation of a chain of custody where those eggs were farmed. All they needed to produce. Yeah, it's madness. I, I I can't believe that we've actually pulled it off. Oh, I can. Listen, I, I get some wrong. Um, didn't get that one wrong. It says he'll be fighting soon. He'll be earning millions. Big fights, earning millions. And 12 months' time, Russell, all will be forgiven. He'll be the poster boy of the zone once again. All will be forgiven, mate. Yeah, it's uh, it's worrying. I'm just worried about all them lads who are boxers now who are thinking, well, is this the way forward? Just take what he's took. Well, I was chatting to a friend last night and uh, he was telling me about a boxing coach who was like really upset. Uh, this lad who's got a boxing gym and he was really upset with the news about Conor Ben. But he said some of the young lads, some of the young amateurs are really excited and really pleased with the news because they're looking for, looking forward to Conor Ben fighting again. And I guess that's the problem, isn't it? You've got these young boxers who are influenced by people like Conor Ben because they're successful. They project an image of what most people who don't have anything want, which is an image of success, an image of wealth, an image of fame, an image of this is what you can have, like footballers do. And young kids aspire to that. And the danger is now is which what you said right at the beginning of this, do what you want, take what you want, because the rewards are too great for you not to cheat and the penalties are too tame for you to worry about failing. Yeah, it's... Uh, there's no consistency. For example, you know Liam Cameron getting a four-year ban for trace amounts of cocaine, oh. one charge. Horrendous. Look at all this, all these others. They're all going off scot free, aren't they? Well, Liam Cameron got a four year ban for traces of cocaine. I bet if Liam Cameron had been arrested for dealing cocaine, he wouldn't have got a four year sentence. Yeah, exactly. He'd have got, he'd have got, two, years, he'd have got two years. Do you know the, the irony is I'm chatting to you now and I'm looking at Clinton Woods, and it seems the juxtaposition from talking about an honest, humble world champion who did everything the hard way and the right way, the yeah. juxtaposition, looking at Clinton Woods and chatting to you, and yeah. then talking about a guy who's bypassed every belt at domestic level and European level to just jump into a potential massive fight with Manny Pacquiao by allegedly taking performance enhancing drugs. And then I'm, I'm just looking at Clinton Woods and I'm thinking... There's no justice. There's no justice. What does because, Clinton you know Woods make of all man. this? He doesn't say much about stuff that's like it, that. That's, what will that's he make exactly about all I'm this? Looking. And looking at it, he'll be thinking, God, <laughs> you know, it would well, hardly say you want it. What would Sugar Ray, I mean, we'll be sure we'll talk about this later, but I think what would Sugar Ray Robinson make of Jake Paul right now and, and this fight at the weekend? You know, what would... Even Tony Simpson make of it. If you if you bumped into Tony Simpson in Leicester in the local Tesco, you had a chat to him. What what would Sibo make of all this? Uh, just uh, the money that they didn't get compared to the money that they get, these guys are getting. It's it's insane, really. I'm smiling now because it is actually insane. Yeah, it's uh, it's changing times for sport, Julian. Do you think? Yeah, it's funny. I've got two things I want to ask you, actually. You're going to laugh at this. You're going to say, this is nothing to do with boxing. But because you've just said changing times, and I'm, I'm grinning as I'm saying it. So I just had a quick scan on Google before I came on. I said, oh, you know, I don't, I'm not live on social media. I thought, I'd have a quick look at if there's any boxing news at the moment that I'm not aware of, if Russell's going to ask me. I logged off work. And it said, first of all, the first thing that came up is, and I'm going to ask you a question. I'm not being deliberately naive. There was a thing about prime energy drinks. Yeah. What's what's this thing about prime energy drinks? I'm, talk to me about it. I don't know. Right. It's something to do with KSI's company. My kids wanted them. And 
Okay. We're getting on, and this shop that Adam were eight quid. It's basically a bottle of pop, but it was eight quid, and it should be three quid. And some shops were charging twenty quid, and all these young kids, all these KSI fans, like my my well, like okay. my drug rats, yeah, we're going mad for these drinks and driving the parents crazy. But it's been recalled. I told you I was hey, no, sorry, mate, carry on. I think it's been recalled or something. I don't know, that's what I've heard. I just keep seeing Prime. I think am I might a round peg in a square hole? Am I just stuck in the 80s? I'm probably a bit of both. And I keep, keep seeing this Prime, and I'm like, I don't get this Prime, because I've heard a few people refer to Prime, and I didn't I didn't know what we were talking about. I thought Prime is where I get all my Amazon stuff from. Okay, so it's an energy drink from KSI. And then the next one, don't even ask me how we're getting on to this. Apologies for stalling you guys talking about boxing, yeah. but David Hay... Has been is now part of a thruple. Yeah. What what what's what what's that? What's the thruple? And I'm I'm being serious. The throttle, I don't know. What, what what do you mean? David Hay is part of a thruple. I think he was pictured with two women. Is am I, is the, is this like a he's got two girlfriends and they both know about it? Or are they is it like a threesome? I don't know. David Hay has announced he's part of a, a thruple. Have you not heard that one? Oh the where the they all, is that where they all sleep together and they're all happy? And is that is that's I don't cool. know. I think so. I think that's what it is because the picture yeah. sort of suggested that. And I was laughing, and so I'm looking for some boxing news to chat to you, so I'm not out of step. And I'd first got the prime energy drink, and then I've got the David Hayes in the throttle. And I just thought, Jules, you so out of touch. What what's a throttle? And then I, I read the first few lines, and I kind of grasp what it could be and I just thought I'm so out of date, I'm so out of touch mate, it's unbelievable well, um, I, didn't, I didn't know what was, so I'm assuming it's that but I mean, they, you won't put it past Davy Day doing something like that because I mean they all like a dare don't they, I mean I don't know <laughs> but I mean don't get me wrong I'm, part, part of me is jealous but I just thought it's a bit it's a bit of a strange thing, I mean I watched Louis Theroux and stuff like that and I've seen you know, sort of unusual situations in relationships with three or four people. And I just wondered if it was the same thing or if throuple meant something else. And I just wonder if you you knew, mate. We can move on move on boxing now, but I just thought it was funny. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to remember that. Uh, can I ask your opinion on Zang and Joe Joyce, Julian? It's a bit of a fun fight, isn't it? Um, Zang's, well, what the combined ages are about 77, aren't they? So none of them are getting any younger, but they're, they're not bad. Zhang's a southpaw, so they don't get many southpaw everywhere. It's now, dear, so it's it'd be interesting for him. And, of course, we've got Usyk, but he's, a, he's tough, his game. Joyce is easy to hit, but he's got a great chin. He's got a great engine. He's got a great work rate. He's got some, some power. I think it's a fun fight, Russell. Sometimes I'm a bit down on heavyweight fights, but if Zhang and Joyce... Was on this weekend. I don't know what I'd pay. Would I pay twenty quid for it? I might not, but I'd pay a tenner for it. You pay a tenner for it. Where do you see Parker? I'd pay a tenner. For it. Where do you see Parker going now? The thing is with Parker, he's just the most unexciting fighter in the heavyweight division. But he might be the nicest guy out of them all. He's such a nice guy. But because we've seen him now for so long, we know what his limitations are. We know what his strengths are. And he's, he's that kind of fighter. Um, let me think of someone from my era so it sounds a little bit... Okay. If you if, if you remember James Quick Tillis from the heavyweight division in yeah. a certain, you know, in the 80s, James Quick Tillis was never good enough to beat the top six or seven heavyweights in the world. But he'd give them a fight and he was good enough to be anybody outside of the top 10. He was kind of that, that type of heavyweight. And Parker's the same for me. He's never going to beat the top six or seven heavyweights in the world, but he's good enough to kind of hover around, you know, the, that sort of just outside that range. Um, but you're never going to get a major upset with, a, if let's just say Parker gets a shot against, I don't know, Usyk or Parker fights Deontay Wilder. You're never going to get an upset. They're going to do what they need to do to beat him. He's just a consistent fighter who's got some limitations, but 
he's just he's a bit boring, isn't he? And I and I, I still haven't seen the fight with Jack Massey. And a couple of people who I do know just say, oh, if you've not seen it, don't bother trying to find that one. It's not a great fight. Uh, obviously, we've got Tyson Fury, Usyk, you know, Joshua, Ruiz, Joe Joyce, Wilder. You know, they're out there on their own, them six, aren't they? And I think then you've got yeah. like your Joe Parker, Otis, White, Dubois, yeah, yeah. Chisora, you know, Pula, Bacoli, Yoka kind of thing, innit? Yeah. Some decent like names. The top six, um, isn't there? And then there's the rest, isn't there? What we don't have, I mean, it's very too, way too early to tell with Moses Atumi, but what we don't have is, and again, apologies for going back a few decades, but you know, every generation we tend to have really exciting fires who come through the heavyweight division and just set the division alight. You know, people are talking about them, and obviously that happened with Mike Tyson, didn't it? And, you know, we've had other fighters coming through who people have been really excited about. And I just don't know if we've got anybody at the moment. We've got some good fighters and some decent, capable heavyweights, but I don't know if we've got anybody who people are just kind of like drooling over the thought of them, um, you know, moving moving up. I, there's nobody really, like I said, we had a Jerry Cooney and guys like that, but there's nobody who I'm like absolutely red hot on right now in the heavyweight division who... I'd pay to see. I'd, I'd like to say the big, the top boys. I'd pay to see any three or four of those in the mix. I'd watch those fights. But in terms of breakthrough stars right now in the heavyweight division, I don't think we have any. Like I say, Moses are too mid, too early. But time will tell. But you've just mentioned those fringe guys, and you got the Dubois and guys like that. They're, they're not, they're not brilliant, are they? No, I mean, like I just said, they left the Wilder, Joyce, Ruiz, Joshua, Usyk, Fury. After them six, the rest of them, they could be that the the rest could be a, a, could lose against the top fifty guy, couldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw that with Hergovic, didn't we? I mean, against Zhang. I mean, it was it was a bit lucky to get that decision. People were building up Philip Hergovic until that point. And what happened is instead of knocking over, you know, easy opposition, we saw him against Zhang. And then actually what we saw was he wasn't that good, was he? So he was a disappointment, massive disappointment. And you're right. I think any of those fights could get beat by some lower level opposition. There's a couple of American heavyweights coming through. Is it, is it Gerard? Uh, what's it called? Gerard Anderson. Um, th there's a couple coming through, but not like, not like we used to. I think Fury... If he was more active and, you know, things weren't as they were, I think Fury could dominate the heavyweight division for quite a few years without even trying, honestly. Yeah, I agree, mate. Do you think that Derek Chisora's uh, going to make another run or do you think he's done? I think Chisora seems to be finding his way doing this thing he's doing at the moment. Um I don't know what his role is. And I think if you ask Derek Chisora, he'd be quite open about this himself, you know, in Saudi at the moment. The Saudis love him. Boxing people like having him around. He's not the most eloquent spokesman. I don't even know what his role is at the moment. Seems to be riling Carl Froch and bigging up Jake Paul. But I think Fury, uh, sorry, I think Chisora's just enjoying being around the big fights, making a few quid for these guest appearances. And I'm starting to wonder because the thing is with Chisora, he likes the money, but that he likes the attention. But he, he knows that he's no longer a top-tier heavyweight. And maybe Chisora's found something now that's going to keep him busy, going to keep him entertained, and it's going to keep him out of the ring. And I hope he has. Yeah. You want to click on part two, pal? Will do, mate. Cheers.